Good day. It's a uh, it's a cool one this morning, which is quite surprising to be honest with you. Um, just looking out the window now. So when I actually left for um, work this morning, um, it was quite a pleasant breeze, really, which is um, different from the norm. As you can see behind me we got um, a portable air conditioner and it's huge and it's big and it sounds like an aircraft taking off and apart from anything else it's, it's absolutely necessary. So the building I work in is fully air conditioned. It's, it's, it's an evaporative system. It's the same system we've got at home. But the problem is, when it gets too hot, um, it just doesn't work. I mean, we're quite lucky at home. We've had it all serviced, etc., etc., um, and, and it's fine even when it gets really hot. But the difference is, uh, the house we live in is specifically built for Australian temperatures, so it's extremely cool inside or cooler inside. So if it's forty-six outside it will be on average 31 inside turn the aircon on and it goes down further which is lovely but in here where i work it's like a big warehouse it just doesn't it, nothing it just does not work properly so that's why we've got the the portable the air conditioner which is fine i i the trouble is you do you have to fill it up with water and um we don't really have a it's such a it's such a big building. We don't have a hose long enough to do it, so you have to do it with a bucket. So it's I'm certainly getting my steps up. Put it that way. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, DNA. Funnily enough, now about five or six years ago, I took a DNA test and um, with ancestry because I was interested. In interested in finding out my relatives and I found out a lot of information, hell of a lot of information, friends, relations all over the world that I never knew I had. Some of it was a little bit odd because you know how, how, how do these people exist, how, how are they so um, close to my family tree. I have my own theories, um, my grandfather was in the Merchant Navy that might have something to do with it and you know you can work out from there what I mean um, so yeah it's I've been in contact with a few of them actually and you know the you know lovely people they're the same as me they're just trying to find out their their ancestry um, in fact the ancestry I thought I had wasn't quite true which normally happens with um, families oddly somebody somewhere was selling some fibs. Um, as a consequence of doing my DNA, uh, I get what's known as traits, health traits. So they send through um, information each week about different health traits. Um, and I don't, I haven't looked at them for a while actually, because um, as you know, as you all know, I do have some health anxiety. Um, anyway, I, there was a particular, there was a couple of particular traits that come through and one of them was quite disconcerting. So I did my usual and I started Googling different aspects of it and I really shouldn't have done because it, it just, it sends you down a rabbit hole of angst, lots of anxiety. And I... Yeah, I, I, I sort of, you know, I, I, I did what I shouldn't have done. And it gave me um, chills, in effect. That's fine. I can cope with that. Um, and when you do open these traits, or when you do look at them, you are made aware that, you know, you might find some sensitive information. Um, scary information. However, I downloaded my raw data into various different sites. So 
from Ancestry.com to Genome Link to, I think it was the other, 23andMe, I think that was the other one that was called. There's a couple of others as well. Now, the trait I got that was bad came from Genome Link. Funnily enough, a few days after, that same trait popped up in another site and it gave me completely the opposite answer. So, angry, annoyed, um, frustrated, got on my computer, did some emailing, sent some messages, you know, you shouldn't be telling people these things without, you know, actually backing up your evidence and, and you know, admitting when something could be possibly untrue. I've had same trait, two different outcomes, two companies um, claiming to be true. Um, my conclusion is I've got to stop or just don't download your data, but I personally got to stop looking at this rubbish because you know I could have any number of issues and as you know I'm at 52 years old, over the past five or six years, I've really begun to take care of my health. Before that, it was a different matter. I used to drink, I used to smoke. I, I was, you know, I ate all the wrong stuff. Um, I was, you know, 25, 30 kilos heavier than what I am now. I can't do any more than what I'm doing. But at 50 years old, things do start to go wrong. And that's, that's obvious. I mean, my father was talking to me a little while ago because he had what was called an ABM an abnormal vein malfunction where uh, it was a brain hemorrhage so he you know it burst on the side of his head he's actually got like a horseshoe shape there now where they took part of his um, skull off and um, dealt with the the mess that was inside that I suppose at that point got me worried about well is it hereditary could it happen to me um, and then there was like my grandfather and grandmother both had Parkinson's and probably both you don't exactly die from Parkinson's, but you die with you no know, complications resulting from it. Um, now, I, I could go through life worrying about all these things forever and ever and a day, but I need to teach myself not to do it. Especially in a country where, you know, doctor's appointments aren't cheap. Um, but if you think, if you're thinking about download, downloading your data, your DNA data into one of these online um, companies, think again, don't bother. The only reason I did it was for family history reasons and I discovered stuff, good stuff that, you know, was relevant and I've been able to um, increase my family tree over generations and generations and, you know, my, my, my family circle has got bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's well worth doing for that purpose alone. But I don't want to see health traits, I don't care about stuff that, you know, my genetic makeup that could affect my health, because there's nothing I can do about it. What can I do about it? Nothing. It's genetic. Ooh. So, think twice. Try not to, to do it. Um, there are other ways of doing family history, as you know. Um, you don't need to download data, like DNA data, but it does help a lot. It's helped me a hell of a lot. Just ignore all the rubbish around it and um, do not download your data into any um, of these other online companies because, you know, two false results or two results that are completely opposite shows that, you know, they're not doing the work properly and it's just there to scare people like me, really. So, yeah, don't. Um, we are in for a heat wave again, so uh, I've got this for a few more days, I believe, um, at least. So Western Australia this year, it has been absolutely um, boiling compared to the rest of Australia. This has been a really, really hot summer. Um, I looked at the weather earlier and it's 44, 45 on uh, tomorrow, Sunday. And 
I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a lover of the heat, as you know. I'm a lover of the sun. Uh, I did burn myself somewhat last weekend on my neck, which I shouldn't really have done. Um, that was just walking. Uh, but we were down by the beach, so you know the sea, the sea air, you know doesn't help in that respect. Um, so yeah, Western Australia is the hottest state, I believe, uh, in Australia, um, and one of the hottest in the world. So these things behind me are absolutely necessary. Sleeping is an issue. I've got my um, my Fitbit. You know, my sleep is sort of anywhere from five to six hours, six and a half hours. I don't get a lot of deep sleep. Uh, it is quite torturous trying to go to sleep. We do have the aircon on just before, um, and that does help. But, you know, it's you're never going to sleep well in this kind of weather. And on the other side of the coin, when winter comes, it's going to be absolutely freezing, like it was last year. It's bizarre, it's, it's, it's desert temperatures. So, you know, th this is what you expect. So, anyway, I hope you all have a great weekend or what's left of your weekend. This is Saturday. So this is my last working day and Sunday, Monday. I mean, Monday, we've got to take the cat to the vet to have the second um, vaccination. So here I'll be ready to go to the Cattery when we go on holiday in a few weeks and um, all systems go. Actually, it might be quite nice to get on holiday because although it's hot where we're going in Vietnam, I don't think it's going to be as hot as here. So it'll actually be quite nice to be cooler. The temperature will also be more humid. So that will also be nice. I love humidity. Uh, the temperature is so dry. My skin is dry. My lips are dry. Everything's dry. Um, so yeah, it's the dry heat, it's good in a way you don't sweat, but oh my God, it dries your skin out. So anyway, have a wonderful weekend and um, whatever you're doing, if you're working like me or not, really. So take care, ciao.